Hello everyone. Today in this post, we are going to take a basic introduction of motion of a body in a plane or a two-dimensional motion. In the previous post, we have discussed it regarding a one-dimensional motion. Let us try to identify what do you mean by one-dimensional motion. Let us consider a horizontal floor, for example. We have a body on the horizontal floor. Let us suppose we have applied a force on the body in the horizontal direction then it is going to move along x axis. So, this is nothing but a one dimensional motion. The body is going to move only along x axis. Say for example, I have the same body, but this time I have applied a force in the vertical direction. Now, it is going to move along y direction. The way the how it moves is going to be along the y direction. So, this is also a one dimensional motion that is going to move along y direction. In both these cases body is moving either along x axis or only along y axis. Now let us consider a scenario I am having a body like this. I am now applying a force or throwing the body like this with the initial velocity u. It is very clear from the diagram that I am not throwing it or trying to move it only along the x direction or I am trying to move it only along the y direction. I have applied a force, I have given a velocity u initial velocity in such a way that that is in between x axis as well as y axis. Now, it is obvious that it is not going to move only along x axis are only along y axis. How it moves? We are going to prove that uh, it is going to move like this. It is going to take a parabolic path. Of course, we are going to prove it. Right now, I am just saying, but we are going to prove that it is going to take a parabolic path. Okay, whether the path is parabolic or not, first of all, it is moving some displacement, it is going to have some displacement along x direction. It is also going to have some displacement along y direction. Say if it is moving along x direction and y direction, it is possible only when it is having certain velocities along x direction and y direction. This so called u, that initial velocity u, now can be resolved into components. How can I resolve? Because it is a vector, I can resolve this component as x component ux. Because it is an adjacent component, it will become u cos theta. The other component is a y component, it is an opposite component that is nothing but equal to u y, that is nothing but equal to u sin theta. The body is getting displaced along x direction and y direction because it is simultaneously having velocity both along x axis and y axis. So, I want to say initial velocity of a vector u bar is some x component along y axis, x axis and some y component u y along y axis it is nothing but equal to j cap to say it is along j y axis I am showing with the j cap. So, I can further represent this u bar as u x is nothing but u cos theta i cap as well as u y is u sin theta j cap. So, it is having velocities both along x axis as well as uh, y axis. So, after a certain time, how much it is going to get displaced? That is what I want to calculate after certain time. How much it get displaced is the point that I want to calculate. So, what I can say after a certain time t, say for example, I want to know the displacement along x axis. Displacement along x axis. I can simply use a formula s equal to u t plus half a t square. Let the displacement along x axis is x. u is nothing but velocity along x direction u x t. The only acceleration acting in the scenario is acceleration due to gravity. But the gravity cannot act along the x direction. Gravity on any body always acts along the y direction. 
of g t square. So x is nothing but equal to u cos theta into t. So it's very clear that uh, after a certain time t, it will have a displacement along x direction whose value is nothing but u cos theta into t. Similarly, along y axis also I can calculate y equal to u y into t plus half acceleration is minus z. Why minus z? The body is trying to come in the downward direction whereas acceleration is acting. Body is trying to move in the upward direction whereas acceleration is acting in the downward direction. So I can write it's having some displacement along x this much. It's having some displacement along y this much. I can write that ui formula u sin theta into t minus half j t square. This kind of a motion is called something like a two-dimensional motion. Simply mean to tell you that it is going to move simultaneously along x-axis as well as the y-axis. It is possible when you have thrown a body with an angle other than 0 and 90. Whenever you throw, see I have thrown here with an angle theta which is greater than 0 but of course less than 90. So whenever you give an angle, of course you can give more than 90 but not 90. Because if you give 90, it becomes a vertically thrown body. So whenever a body is thrown with an angle other than 0 and 90, will have a two-dimensional motion. And that motion is also called like a projectile motion. We will be continuing this discussion further. In the next post, I am going to talk about a two-dimensional motion. Thank you.